Andy Santiago. Um, today we're bringing you a show live from the capital and we're staying with Goose's um, cousins and uh, Magda who's five. I'm not sure if she's going to join in because last night was a very exciting night and so maybe she's not up for it, she might be shy. So we'll see. So today's goal is... Globe. I, I did not get a time to finish this, as you can imagine, living with an excited five-year-old. So I'll finish it afterwards. Global goal 12. <laughs> Here's our hands. So we managed to get a little bit far in the, the preparation. So luckily I do have it here, a bit more information. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, if you haven't done these sessions before, it's to give you the skills to be able to educate and empower kids. Uh, the next generation in order for them to be able to be active and activist. So we're going through the different goals and I'm showing you how to coach and do fun games innovation in order to get the message across to young kids because obviously they're the next generation. So for the research I use the United Nations Development Programme website which is undp.org. Um, so today's one, as I started doing my session plan before, the distractions came is uh, responsible consumption and production so achieving economic growth and sustainable development requires that we urgently reduce our ecological footprint by changing the way we produce and consume goods and resources um, and then there's loads of cool facts so Magda is close and three meters away but she's a bit suspicious and shy so I reckon she'll come at the end okay so firstly we need to warm up so we have Magda's gigantic pink ball. <laughs> That's got a smile from our five-year-old friend. Okay, so we're going to start by doing a warm-up with this. Because, can you just check if they can hear with the ring? Can you say yes? Okay, so <laughs> Magda's watching. <laughs> and so we're going to start. We've got the okay to use her ball. Okay, so... We need to use the small balls. <laughs> we have a clown here. Small balls. This is how you ready to multitask. So similar warm up to normal. If Magda comes, then we'll just everything's going to change because she'll make the rules because she's the boss. Okay, let's go. So you just want to challenge the kids to get their coordination going. Yep. Obviously Goose has a harder job than normal because he's filming at the same time. But international rugby player. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So we've got a spectator here at least. Now I'm going to try it like this. Wait. Yep. So this is really good core stability. Magda is uh, an aspiring ballet dancer, gymnast, uh, singer, general performer. So this is good for her to do um, to get the course ability going. You can get kids to use their cognitions as well, so the brain <laughs> nearly went back. Okay, um, by challenging them to talk in different languages or say things, because then that not only um, uses their motor skills but also their cognitions. Come, um, you'll get wet. Okay, my plan was to do the session on the trampoline. Um, we had so many trampoline games planned, but maybe we will film them separately um, because today is gonna be not very nice to trampoline in the rain and not a good example. <laughs> okay, so we have why do we have such Okay, so today's goal, once you've done a bit of a warm-up to get people feeling more relaxed, I found my resistance band, so we're going to use that today. So we're focusing on Global Goal 12, which is sustainable. I did not think I'd get to talk about the Global Goals today, so I thought she would be here. So I'm going to tell you some facts from the website, which I will write up when I have time. So, um, facts and figures. 1.3 billion tons of food. One punto. Three 
billion tons of food is wasted every year on, on the other side, while almost 2 billion go hungry or undernourished. 1.3 billion eh, tones? toneladas. toneladas de comida está perdida cada año, mientras casi 2 billion de gente están con hambre o con poco comida. ¿Está bien? Um, next fact. Uh, globally, 2 billion people are overweight or obese. 2 billion de gente están sobrepeso o con obesidad. What's the population of the world? 7 billion. 7 billion. So of 7.8 billion, I think it is. Uh, of the 7.8, 2 billion of them are overweight or obese. And the, then at the other end of the spectrum, there's people dying of hunger. It's just so unbalanced. 3% of the world's water is fresh, drinkable, only 3%, and humans are using it faster than the nature can replenish it, so we're taking more than what, the, what nature can recycle it. Um, okay, ready for this one. In US dollars, so 120 billion dollars, if everybody switched to energy efficient light bulbs, you know the little bit dimmer ones but uh, they're energy efficient the world would save per year 120 billion dollars voy a repetir en español si gente en todos los lugares en el mundo cambiaron solo eh, la ampolleta, la ampolleta <laughs> eh, a una que es más ecológica ¿Está bien? que el mundo eh, guardaría ¿Ahorraría? Ahorraría. Eso. <ríe> eh, 120 billón eh, de los dólares de los Estados Unidos. That's a lot of money. Um, and finally, one fifth of the world's final energy consumption in 2013 was from renewable sources. So only one, one bit out of five. So if you show kids, you can like show a pie chart or a birthday cake and say just one of these fifths of this pie chart is from renewable sources, everything else was from fossil fuels or maybe carbon neutral. So yeah, clearly a lot of work to do. If you go onto the UN Development Programme site, um, the good thing is it tells you that information about it, facts, I love a good fact, targets, the goals in action for kids. Um, yeah, it's really good, that's what I used to do all the research for the session plans which uh, I will now do subsequently to the session due to living with a five-year-old. So, um, I'm just going to show you how to do a bit more of a warm-up with the um, is it resistance band, because we haven't used it before, and how to relate it. So the message I would try to be getting across today is the massive difference, like a massive discrepancy between rich people and poor people. So I'm going to do it at a five-year-old level because in case Magda decides to enter, I think she's too shy. Um, she's not shy normally. Um, so the main message... Do you want to come in off the ring? So I can just go back and um, So the main message is going to be why is there such a big difference between rich and poor people? Okay, because kids probably would say it's really unfair. And it is. So, um, often in the most developing countries, that's where you see the biggest discrepancy between rich and poor. So, like, very, 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 very wealthy people, and then people living in really, really bad conditions without food and water. And it's just so unfair. So, that's what this goal is about, um, as, as well as the things they said before. So, the game uh, that we can do with this one is you want to have uh, two conditions for all the games. So, one is going to be really easy and one's going to be really hard. So the same as when we did the climbing wall game, where you put conditions in to simulate um, that sometimes people have it, a lot of barriers to overcome. For example, like, uh, they have education to overcome, or they have a lot of discrimination to overcome uh, in order to do the same thing. So it's a similar message that we're going to be trying to deliver today, in that if we're trying to talk about res um, sustainable and responsible consumption and production, we need to be able to allude to the kids that there we need to tackle the massive difference in consumption, production 
um, and this gap in between in order to solve the global goals before 2030. So, okay, with a uh, resistance band, which this cost me about, I think, one pound, two pounds in Bristol in a climbing wall. Um, I don't know why there's so much newspaper everywhere. I think it may be from a game. Okay, so you're going to set a challenge. So, one of you puts your foot here on the end. Okay, and then, so here, if you're a sports scientist, you'll know about this, or a fitness instinct. So here, we're going to be working the bicep. Okay, can you see? So, you're going to stand like that, and you're going to be trying to work the bicep, like that. Okay, so one of you, you I can go back. I also don't want the phone to die. Okay, one of you is going to do that, and you're going to see how many um, times you can do it. For me, this is very easy because it's not much resistance. So here's a good muscular endurance workout. You want to make sure all the movements slow and controlled. Don't do that. Okay. So and then the other person has got to do the same task, but you're going to increase the resistance. Okay. So now it's harder. You can do it on one leg if you want to so just give your uh, balance workout as well, or proprioceptive training. Okay, and the kids will say, well, but that's not fair because one of them's harder. And that's when you bring in the messaging that we're trying to get across that, no, it's not fair that, for example, some people in the world have too much food and they're just throwing it away, they're not even being careful with it, and other people are starving and hungry. So it's, uh, you need, we need to convey those points because kids are very good at seeing injustice. Um, you see it if you coach kids. It's really important just to be fair. If you make a rule, you've got to stick to it and you've got to be fair to everyone because that's how you gain their respect. Uh, you do not gain their respect from um, being inconsistent. So if you um, have a, a condition like this, kids as young as I would say three or four can spot that there's uh, injustice and it's unfair and they'll get upset about it. So we need to get that attitude going into the global goals problems. Okay, next condition, next game. So then we have the skipping rope challenge. Maybe should we move inside for the ring? So loud. What well, ask people? They don't reply. Can you just if anyone's watching, please tell us if the rain is too loud. Okay, so the first condition, you have to skip normally. I'm too tall. <laughs> okay. Okay, and you're going to see how many times you can do it. So the, <laughs> the race would be, uh, the competition I would do if Magda was here, uh, is who can do um, 20 skips the fastest. Okay, so person number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 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 ten. Do you want a secret tactic for skipping? Very minimal jumping. Okay, like that. Kids need to jump when you come in. When you jump, you're using just the ball of your feet, like that. Okay, it's, it's, uh, it makes it easier. Come in from the ring. Um, okay, next bit. The second condition, so the one that's harder and unfair, is you've got to do a double skip. See, this is quite hard. Then to make the skipping rope shorter. Ready? So, okay. So a double skip. The rope goes around twice in one jump. So here. Ready? <laughs> Ow. It's hard on your knees. If you have any knee problems, don't do this. I've done two so far. 
Still two. Okay, come on. No. It's very hard, and the idea is so the kids will say it's not fair, and you say, yes, I know it's not fair, and then you get the message across again. Then we want to talk about um, the water situation, how we're using more than, than is sustainable. The, the nature, can't, nature can't replenish the fresh water that we're using, so we're using too much, so we want to find a way to get that message across. So, in my box of tricks. So, let's collect all the random selection of forms that we have. Okay, so you're going to do a game in which there is a, a short supply, a limited supply of things. So we've got four balls in here, two squidgy balls, one tennis ball and one ping pong ball. So this is our treasure chest. Okay, and, and the game is um, something that the kids can do where this is going to run out. So you can do penalty shootouts, you can do basketball shots, you can do anything really, but this is one. Okay, so the aim of this game is to throw the ball and hit the giant pink ball and hopefully not hit the vase afterwards. Ready? One. I'm going to try and do um, ten. Well, what? No, twelve for a goal pass. Okay, so the water ran out. Um, so then that's when I would bring in the point of saying, um, so the fresh water in the world, which makes up 3% of the Earth's surface, uh, we are using more than nature can put back in. You can add a bit of curriculum stuff about the water cycle, condensation, evaporation, um, rain, like that kind of stuff. So, because just a simple thing, the kids are gonna be like, uh, we've used all our balls, what do we do now? So that's similar messaging like that. Okay, sorry, <laughs> just have to. Okay, and the next one. So this was my plan for when Magda was here because she really likes my white helmet. So the game that you can do with kids to show injustice and show how it's so imbalanced is one of you or if you're doing it with a group then one of you gets to have the special helmet or the special sunglasses so the special person <laughs> the person with the cool helmet well i think it's cool somebody of what um puts on the helmet okay and then you're going to apply the the helmet game to the global goal so this one in case you haven't joined us before uh, I'll just score it in for you now. So normally we start with a warm up, then we do an individual game, individual, and then a group game. <laughs> Imagine someone tunes in now and I'm just randomly wearing a bike camera. Uh, then we do a physical challenge. And then action for the goal. Okay, so the warm up, remember we did we're on the pink ball, like core stability stuff. Uh, so you can just you reuse that anytime because it's a, something you can do in a short, small area and it's really good for core stability. Then uh, individual games, any of the ones I showed you, like with the resistance band. Remember we did the resistance band one, the skipping one, um, the one with the, the balls in, in the chest, okay? So that game where everything runs out. So I will write up all of the games that we did so that you have them to refer to. Group games, you can do the same, but with a group. Or if you're teaching kids on via uh, the internet, like via Zoom or Meet, then you can do these challenges, but put the kids against each other. like. So they have their squidgy ball, for example. How many times can you throw it at a target? 
and how long does it take to run out, for example. Okay, then, um, so hopefully you can see how the individual games could now be applied um, also as a group. Uh, so I'll just tell you the helmet game. So the helmet game, which I was going to do with Magda before she got too shy, is um, so one of you, one person has a special helmet, and that gives them special powers. Okay, so we're again linking it to several of the goals. It could be linked to the reducing inequalities one, gender equality, um, or in this case, this one, right? Uh, responsible consumption and production. So you're going to say whoever's got the pink helmet. They've got special powers, so they can do things that other people can't do. So, for example, if we're playing a game of tag, or stuck in a mud, or any classic playground games, this helmet, or a bib, or a captain's armband, or anything that will differentiate, this helmet gives them special powers um, from a, like immunity. So, for example, um, if we're doing a game here with some kids of tag, whoever's wearing the helmet can't be tagged. Or if you're doing a game of um, Chaos Tag, I don't know if you're familiar with Chaos Tag, it's a really good game. Uh, so it's all against all tagging. When If you tag at the same time, can I have your hand please? So if we both tag each other at the same time, uh, then that means we have to do rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay, and if we've got the same, we'd have to do it again. Um, so all those games, you just apply the same immunity with the uh, helmet or glasses, okay? Okay, next up, the physical challenge. Okay, um, so this is what something we do which helps people unite across the world, so we put them against each other. You might remember a few weeks ago we did um, the, the challenge with the step ladder and we got people across the world to join in and do the Step ladder challenge and Chile won. Vamos Chile! So today's physical challenge we'll do, and if you're watching now live, uh, you can do it. If you're watching on the repeat, you can also do it, but just so you know, you won't be able to compete um, because you're not live. Um, so let's let's try the physical challenge. Okay, so today's physical challenge is going to be a footballing one. So you need your football. And it's one of the ones we did with the Brave Challenges, um, where you balance it on your foot. If you need to refer to the Brave Challenges, you can go to our YouTube or our Instagram or Facebook and you can see it where we just focus on this. Okay, so what you need to do is put the ball on your foot, like that, and you're going to see how long can you balance it for. Okay, now you have to apply differentiation because, can you see, yeah. because um, some kids will find it really easy um, if they have done football before and other kids will find it really hard. So if a kid find that, finds that very hard, differentiation, okay, of the, of the same challenge. Okay, so you're going to put it on your foot like that and the kid can just hold it with one finger or two okay, and just to get the feel of the ball on their foot. Kinesthetic awareness. Okay, so to develop a kinesthetic understanding or kinesthetic awareness of the skill, they can just use their fingers to hold it on their foot. That would be level one. Level two, maybe they lift it like that. Okay, that's level two. Level three. Try and balance it. Level four, stand up and hold it. Level five, level six, level seven would be what I just did. And then for the really smart one, or really good one, uh, if you have experience, you can try jumping. Okay, and then we're going to try spin. It's really important that uh, we are building coordinated players who can use both sides of their feet. 
because often you can have an outstanding player and they only use one side of their body. Um, but in a game of football, for example, you can't, you can't guarantee which side of, the, uh, of your body the ball is going to come to always. You might go up for a corner and head the ball and it's not on your favourite side. Um, for example, if, if the ball's coming to me now, like here, it's natural for me to volley it on with my right foot. If the ball's coming here, it's very advantageous that I'm confident to volley it on my left foot. If you're not, if you see athletes that are not confident, they will have to adjust their body. Okay, make allowances. First touch, second touch. Okay, you see why that would take longer and you'll lose possession or you get tackled. And so it's just uh, to get players developed on both sides. So let's try. So we go for level one, kinesthetic awareness. Level two, level three, level four, five. It depends also on your shoes. Like football boots will be really flat and easier. I'm not wearing. I'm wearing my trail running shoes good for mountain biking and trail running and rainy days because they're waterproof but you see how they're rounded so it's a bit harder but if you have um, football boots easier or bare feet okay tell the kids to watch the ball and then tell them to not watch the ball okay and then we're going to try the jumping one and the spin. You can know it all the way. Okay, and now the spin. You can see that my right foot is much stronger than my left foot, even though I do a lot of practice on my left foot. Okay, so you can see, and if you want to see how developed your players are on both feet, you need to challenge them to do difficult challenges on both sides. So that's the physical challenge done. And now the action for the goal. So I will write this in afterwards, but I can um, explain it to you now. Do we have my phone? The left one? Okay, no worries. Um, so... I'm gonna do uh, action for the goal. How we'll do? Uh, we're gonna do th four actions for this goal, and I'm gonna do say 12. I'm gonna do two headers, one action. Two headers, one action, two, like that. Okay, ready? First action is so um, let's reduce our food waste. So to reduce those billions of tons of food that's wasted, um, you can do lumami. Um, in Chile, that's what they say for food on Thursday, which is lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves. And so they put lunes, martes, miércoles together, lumami, uh, and then you make a kind of creative feast of what you've had on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and have it on Thursday. It's an example. You could do it on Friday <laughs> or whatever. Um, my mum calls it fruits of the fridge. Okay, so try to reuse your, your leftovers. Okay, let's go for the next action. Okay, um, so the next action, we're, remember we were talking about how we're using more fresh water than we, the nature can replenish. So that means for that goal, um, just simple one of uh, turning your taps off. If you brush your teeth, you should be brushing your teeth by the way on one foot. Because um, it's a great time to be mindful and to, if you're a footballer or a basketball player or any athlete that does a lot of turning um, or you want to prevent injury prehab then it's a really good way to strengthen the proprioceptors in your ankle ligaments um, just to reinforce them it's really really important especially for female players because um, the way our bodies are lined up quite prone to injury especially because we have to play with a size 5 heavy football which is designed for the male body 
and we should be playing with the air soccer balls which are lighter, smaller and we can actually play really well with. So just a quick shout out there for the air soccer balls. Um, so going back to the brushing your teeth on one foot, while you're brushing your teeth on one foot also turn the tap off because you don't need to have the tap running. Why? Okay so you get your toothbrush, water on it and then and then you just turn the tap off. Okay, next one. Okay, the next action. Um, so remember in the goals that we talked about the the how some like billions of people are obese and billions of people are starving. So we could help these people by supporting charities that are doing really good work in the developing world or like countries that are uh, struggling a lot with helping people come out of famines or they have some kind of natural disaster which is reducing the quality of their agriculture or perhaps their soil that they have is not as fertile as, as what we have in other countries so it's just impossible or very difficult for them to cultivate. So now there's so many technologies that we can use to implement better agriculture in those countries um, which would enhance their uh, production so that they can kind of join the global market uh, contribute to their economy so just look up some charities and I can also look them up for you and um, that are looking at sustainable agriculture in in countries where it's more difficult to grow things so that they're not only self-sustaining but they can also start exportation um, to, to contribute to other societies uh, other countries economies so that's something we can do. Um, off the top of my head, I can't name you some agricultural charities, but I'll look them up. In terms of water, uh, water aid, um, I've, we talked about them on the on the Life Below Water charity, uh, Life Below Water session where we looked at charities. So I can look them up and I'll add them to the session plan. Uh, one more. So going back to the obesity one, um, that's a really big problem. Um, if that many people are overweight and obese, there's so many health problems uh, by being obese. So, I mean, as a sports scientist and athlete, uh, don't get me started on the problem. So, being obese, um, so your artery, instead of being like this, the cholesterol, the fatty bits, uh, they gather inside the artery. So, the artery, instead of being nice and open, it becomes constricted like that then the blood that's flowing is under a lot more pressure to get through because the artery is so small so the blood is under higher pressure higher blood pressure leads to all kinds of problems uh, people who are stressed also have higher blood pressure because well I won't go off on one on why but so yeah the just one thing of being obese is your arteries are clogged and they become the cholesterol fills the arteries and no one really wants that um, also obesity can lead to depression anxiety um, the negative body image uh, psychological uh, emotional damage um, obesity also has lots of other problems that can be linked to like heart failure and um, you can get like there's just so many problems so one thing everyone could do is just try and make sure your body is a healthy weight uh, if you need to know what would be a healthy weight, you can refer to BMI, body mass index, but you should be aware that um, body mass index, if you're an athlete, um, body mass index is not quite so helpful because the weight of your muscles is three times that of fat. So on body mass index is oversimplified because it just blanks everyone as the same body type there's actually ectomorphs, mesomorphs, endomorphs. So uh, just be careful if you're an athlete, if you're very muscly or you're quite a strong or heavy, then the BMI is not going to be so indicative of your correct body weight. For example, for me, probably I come out as more, as higher on the BMI scale just because I've got more muscle and I'm tall. So just to be aware of that, don't get scared if you're an elite Olympian and the BMI tells you that you're obese, you're not obese. So just to be aware. Um, so yeah, the fourth target we can do is check your BMI. Make sure that you're in a healthy range. It's between, mm, I think, 20 and 25 is is a healthy range. But if you were tall and or muscly or 
um, mesomorphic, then you can go more to the 25, 26, 27 with probably not being concerned. Um, if you want more information on that, then feel free to drop me a message um, via the Team Brave Instagram or Global Goals. So we've got our four targets, um, which are covering the responsible consumption production and looking at how we can um, reduce the disparity between people who have a lot and people who don't have a lot, bring those together because that's normally indicative of um, countries that are developing uh, faster uh, or maybe not necessarily faster but if you look at countries that are um, going a better way they will have a dis uh, flatter between the very upper echelons of society like the the richest people and the poorest people is going to be a smaller gap. You can see why, because maybe the poorer people have been empowered and they've got an education or they have um, studied or they've done courses and their income is coming up. Okay, so we want less of a gap. So that's what, if, the, if it's like that, it's just unfair and all the problems come. So um, I will now just write up the session plan and post it so that you have it. I'm sorry it wasn't complete. It's just... Uh, I'm living with a five-year-old, so any parents or aunties and uncles out there will hopefully understand. Um, and the next session is on Friday. Oh, sorry. The next session should be on Friday, but I'm flying to England um, for on Friday. So we'll be doing this session that was going to be on Friday. is going to be postponed until Sunday. So I'll be doing it from my mum and dad's garden in summer in England. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you on Sunday. And then the week after, it's back to the normal schedule. So I'll be in quarantine, so very available. So then it will be going goalkeeping in Spanish on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like the normal pattern. So thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it. And sorry that Magda didn't make an appearance as, as expected. I think she got shy or maybe she wasn't allowed out in the rain. Um, but I'm sure she will uh, send us something, some cool videos or something for another time. Thank you. Have a lovely rest of your day. Ciao.